Hello, welcome. As you can see here in this video, we're going to talk about subtraction and specifically subtracting polynomials. Now, a polynomial, just remember, poly means many and nomial means number. So we're talking about essentially expressions that have many different terms or numbers or values. So for example, right here, this is a polynomial with three terms. The terms can't be combined because of the variables being different powers here. So you can't simply add them uh, in a direct way. It's not going to work. So uh, that's one polynomial. And we're clearly subtracting this polynomial from it. So what do we do? Well, um, I think the first thing to realize is that uh, you're going to be reordering these things and subtracting them so it's a little bit more friendly. So in the in the first polynomial here, I'm going to reorder it, put it in standard form. And the way I'm going to do that is before I reorder anything, I'm going to write everything as an addition. So you see right here this subtraction. So I'm going to add negative 5n cubed, right? Because I had subtracting 5n cubed, the same thing as adding a negative 5n cubed. I'm going to do that again here. And then in this other polynomial, I'm going to add negative 12n and add negative 7n squared. And that's important because now what I'm dealing with are one, two, three terms being added in the first polynomial, and I can then put them in any order. Uh, I don't need to write plus and negative for the first term. It's just there's no need for that. But you can think of there being an, an invisible plus sign in the front. And in the other polynomial here, the second polynomial, again, I've, I've rewritten it so I'm adding, and you don't need to actually do this step, but I, I do it, it usually reduces my errors here. And now I'm adding three terms there. Why is that really helpful? Because when you're adding stuff, you can change the order without changing the value. So if you had three plus two, right, that's the same as two plus three. That's a property of addition, where you can change the order of the terms without changing the the result. That's called the commutative property of addition. Anyway, so in the first polynomial, I'm gonna put the biggest powered term first. And I'm talking about n being raised to the third power, that exponent, that means n times n times n. That's the biggest one there. And don't forget, it's a negative five n cubed, so I'm gonna put that in the front. And then I have n squared here, so that's gonna be plus negative nine n squared. Now here, you want to make a choice. Do you want to really write plus a, mi a negative, or is that confusing? So what you can do is just write negative 9n squared to save yourself a little bit of space. It's kind of the opposite of what you did up here. We rewrote everything using more symbols so we can move them around. Now we just kind of go backwards. So instead of writing plus a negative 9n squared, it's just minus 9n squared, same thing. And then plus a negative 3n, that's just going to be minus 3n. So I've just reordered it. Okay, now in the second polynomial, I'm gonna reorder that as well. I have negative 10n cubed in, as the first term. That's the biggest power, okay. There's my next biggest power, minus seven n squared, and then finally minus 12n. So now this helps me because now I have my biggest powers first, and then my second biggest powers, and then the, the smallest powers here. And at this point, I think I find that two students typically choose one of two things, and I'll show you both. So one strategy is to realize, okay, we're subtracting everything in the first term. Really, right, we're subtracting all this stuff. Subtracting all of it. It's all being subtracted away. So you're subtracting negative 10n cubed, you're subtracting negative 7n cubed, and you're subtracting negative 12n. You're subtracting all these things. So instead of think, losing track of that, what a lot of people like to do is, I'm going to rewrite my first polynomial. Okay, so I'm just rewriting that. And then I'm going to essentially what's called distribute this subtraction. I'm going to subtract each term and rewrite what happens. So what does happen? In the first case, we're subtracting a negative 10n cubed. That's the same thing as adding 10n cubed. 
And then we're subtracting a negative 7n cubed squared, excuse me, so it's going to be a positive 7n squared. When you subtract a negative, you really add, right? Take the negatives away from your life. It's really adding on. And then finally, we subtract negative 12n, so now it's going to be plus 12n. Okay, so now we've got all this, and we combine like terms. And so what some teachers show is I look for all the like terms. So the numbers, the coefficients, these numbers here don't matter as much, right? What you're really interested in are the powers of the variables. And I'm not going to explain that here, but essentially that allows you to add terms. I'll try to explain it in a quick way. And some teachers like to surround similar terms with similar shapes. So you know what you're doing. And then I've got one more. Uh, I'll just circle the last ones. And I guess you know, I should really use a third color, just black. Okay. So now I'm going to try to keep track of this without messing it up. First, I have the this term and this term. where I, I, I put these green rectangles around them. And what do I have here? Well, I have negative 5n cubed plus 10n cubed. And that's going to give me 5n cubed. Now, how did I do that? Well, I'm going to write over here to show you. So I'm thinking you have negative 5n cubed and 10n cubed. And I'm going to explain this one two ways as well. So what I would say to students, first of all, is that once you have equal variables, you leave those alone, and all you're doing is either adding or subtracting the coefficients. That's these things here. So negative 5 plus 10. Well, I think I have 10, right? And then I lose 5. That's just 5. And then I leave the variable alone. It's n cubed. All right. Well, why does that make sense? Well, the second way to think about this is that you have multiplication. You have negative 5 times n cubed and 10 times n cubed. So what does that mean? I like to use the word groups, right? I think of the word groups. So it's saying that we have 10 groups of n cubed, 10 of them. And then we're essentially taking away 5 of them. You add 10, you take away 5. And what do you have left? Well, you have 5 groups of n cubed. So you're really counting the number of groups. And that helps me out because, like, in the next one, we have negative 9n squared. And that's that tells me I'm taking away 9 groups of n squared. Okay, so I lose 9 groups. And then I add 7 groups. So I lost 9 and I add 7. That leaves me negative 2 groups of n squared. And if you don't like that approach, you can write it over here. Just like this, I mean, negative 9n squared plus 7n squared. Again, we have the same variable, n squared, we leave that alone, and then we do negative 9 plus 7, and that's just negative 2. And then finally, we have negative 3n, and we're adding 12n to that. So it's negative 3 plus 12, that's 9. So it's 9n. And now we're done. This is generally considered the type of answer you're looking for, where you have the largest power up front, the n cubed, right? So that's this is called standard form. And then you have an n squared, and then just n to the first. And usually you want to leave your answers in that form. In the next video, I'll show a second way of doing this, because I did say I want to show two, but I need to get a drink of water. And so I'll do that in the next video with a different problem. Thanks.